Hello, hello, and welcome to my new series. This video and those to follow in this series are going to be focusing on Minecraft, and in particular, Minecraft played with the Tekkit mod pack and everything that comes with it. In this video, I'm going to be discussing my plans and goals for this series, but before I get into that, I just want to make something very clear. A lot of my subscribers found their way to my YouTube channel for the Guild Wars 2 content, and I just want to reassure them that my plans for Guild Wars 2 content remain unaltered. As I'm sure many of you have discovered for yourself, it's better to be playing a game than waiting for one, so here I am. My position regarding my YouTube channel has always been that I will cover the games that I enjoy, as long as I feel I can produce entertaining and or informative content for those games. If you like Minecraft or you haven't tried it and are curious about it, stick around and enjoy. And if you happen to know some other folks who enjoy the Minecraft, don't be afraid to let them know about this video. I'm going to try and keep each video in the 10 to 20 minute duration range, long enough to show off some things in a bit of detail but not so long that you need to schedule your day around them. As far as mods and such go I'm running as few mods as possible which is still quite a decent number when you consider all the mods associated with Tekkit. In fact aside from the Tekkit mod pack and everything associated with it the only additional mod I'm running is Optifine and I'm also using this Fax Pure BD Craft Texture Pack. For this video series I want to focus really on two general areas. First I want to build some interesting things. For me, a certain element of creativity is the name of the game and I invite you to follow along with my successes and failures in coming up with unique yet functional structures through the Minecraft world and into the nether. I also want to show off some of the cool things you can do to support the creative building aspect with the Tech at Mod Pack. Tools, machine blocks, and other goodies will be highlighted and if all goes well, you might learn something you didn't know or get inspired to try something new in your own Minecraft worlds and maybe even be entertained for a while in the process. This is a survival mode game on normal difficulty and I've already invested a fair bit of time into this game world so let's start off by recapping what I've done up to this point. Now as far as this footage goes this is basically taken from my very first couple of minutes in the game after I created this world specifically for this project. You'll notice you probably noticed it started me right next to a volcano which is awesome because even though there's not a, lo a lot of lava to be had from a volcano there's definitely a ton of basalt cobblestone and I love building with that stuff. Not only is it nice in terms of the color contrast black on the natural environment it's also resistant to creeper explosions which I find is extremely handy especially in the early game when my structures are a little bit more prone to getting tagged by the occasional angry creeper. If there was a way to turn off creeper explosions in a single player game I don't even think I would because it's one of those things that I could do without it but for the number of times it's actually really made me mad. Uh, it's, it's nice to have that little added consideration to put into things. So plenty of cobblestone but the one thing it did not give me immediate direct access to was wood. So I had to go searching around to find a supply of wood. What I've found so far is pretty mediocre. A tree here and there enough to start making some basic tools. So. I could spend hours showing you guys all the minute details and all the little places that I ran to and all the things that happened on the way of getting established, but I think I've already told you that there's some interesting things that I've built. So let's just kind of give you the abbreviated version. First of all, find a source of coal, which I found. Find a source of wood, chop, 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 run screaming home like a little bitch, dig a hole, build a bunker, dig a deeper hole. Now, this is an interesting spot that I just kind of want to show off a little bit. This is how I dig straight down. I'm sure everyone has their own way of doing it, but in the past, the ways that I've tried have frequently landed me into a pool of lava with very little chance to respawn. So now I go three wide like you see here. While standing on the middle block, I dig two down to either side, put up the ladder on one side, and then I can hop down and dig the other two. That way if I do expose a lava pool, I'm not falling directly into it and I have a place to jump to to safety without getting burned to a crisp. So if you've ever wondered how to dig straight down without getting roasted, you might want to give this a try. Once I get down to the bedrock, that's basically my goal. I don't care about a lot of cobblestone. I'm not too concerned about getting a bunch of building materials. I want to get down to the bedrock. I want to start digging for diamonds and that means I basically have to come up with some machine blocks. All I really need is a forge or a furnace um, and some storage and 
uh, workbench so that I can make things. I will make one iron pick so that I can dig things that require an iron pick like diamonds, gems, redstone, things of that nature. And then until I upgrade my tools, which you'll see a little bit later, I am more than happy to use just the stone picks because I tend to go through them often enough while I'm in the process of looking for other materials to make better tools that if I were using diamond or if I were using iron tools, I would be kicking my ass later on because I actually do need a ton of iron later on in the game. So I've basically set myself up. I've got wood. I've got down to the bedrock. I've got all the material access to all the materials that I need to get started here. So now it's time to focus on building the machine blocks that will help me get established and get me where I want to go. Now I've skipped several hours ahead actually, even though it doesn't look like I've done a whole lot, I have my structure first of all, I'm not showing it off because it's basically a square box with a roof. Um, I've established sort of a mining network underground, I've got easy access to that forest not far from here. So now it's time to start looking at what I've got on hand and start converting it into machine blocks to make everything that I'm doing a whole lot easier. The first place for that is a source of energy and I found that I much prefer to just skip right past generators. As as a source of electricity for my machine blocks and go directly to geothermal generators. I found that if I have the materials to make a generator, I usually have the materials to convert it to a geothermal generator and then instead of having to power everything with coal, I can just run around, fill up some lava cells, some empty um, energy cells with lava and use those instead. It's just much, much more efficient. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm also going to build an extractor, which allows me to get more rubber out of my rubber resources. I've planted a few rubber saplings out in the yard just outside the bunker, but I found that rubber is one of those things. If you handle everything properly, you give it appropriate attention. You don't really have to worry about it. If I dick around and kind of forget about it, I usually wind up regretting it when I need to make some wires. And believe me, I'll be making a lot of wires. So next up after the extractor, I actually want to get a battery box in between my generator and the extractor. It doesn't really serve a hugely beneficial purpose, I just prefer it because as you'll see in a little while when I start switching to power tools, yes if, you have, if you're not familiar with TechIt there are power tools. When you start switching over to power tools, I find it's a lot easier to charge a battery pack in a battery box than it is to try and charge it from a generator. So that's what I want to do. I want to get everything set up so I have a generator feeding a battery box, battery box fe feeding my machine blocks. And then when I need to charge up a battery pack, I can just throw it in the battery box and do that. Once I get the battery box in place, I want to add a, a macerator so that I can increase the yield of ore that I'm, or the, increase the yield of ingots that I'm getting from the ore I'm mining up. That's never a bad thing. I'm always, always, always short on copper ore for whatever reason. I think it's because copper ore tends to appear higher up in the strata, and I usually spend most of my time right down along the bedrock. So anything I can do to increase my ore yield is awesome by me and then I can start think about adding things like an electric furnace so I'm even less reliant on coal and also eventually I will need to add a compressor but I'll worry about that in a little while so first of all we get the battery box in place we get the macerator attached to that and then just for shits and giggles I'm gonna make my first power tool this is the diamond tipped drill I absolutely love this thing it's basically like having a diamond pickaxe and a diamond shovel that never wears out it does use power and if you run out of power it's basically useless to you it functions as though it was a wooden tool but it's so much easier to tote around a couple of battery packs and never have to worry about digging up diamonds to replace the, the tools that you just broke I absolutely love it so even though I'm not quite set up to use it yet I'm more than happy to make it and just set it aside also one thing that I've learned the hard way 
if you don't want to lose it, don't bring it with you. So since I'm not going to be using it right away because the charge that it holds on its own without a battery pack is pretty puny, I'm just going to leave it in my storage while I go around and gather up some more materials, continue building my machine blocks, and then we're going to get to the mother of all fun power tools, and that is the chainsaw. Okay, it cuts trees like a diamond axe. It shears sheep like iron shears, and it is also a very effective weapon against pretty much any monster that you'll come across. It's probably one of the more dangerous weapons, particularly for what it costs to make, which is next to nothing. And just like the diamond drill, this thing never breaks. It'll use up power, and if it's out of power, it tends not to be able to do a whole hell of a lot. But as long as it's powered, it's one of my favorite tools to have on hand. So I've got my diamond drill, I've got my chainsaw, I want to make an electric wrench, that's very important because when it comes time to moving around machine blocks, having an electric wrench set to lossless mode guarantees that I won't break the machines. There's nothing more frustrating than scrounging up the components to make, you know, a tier 1 or a tier 2 machine and then have it reverted to a machine block when you go to move it because you broke it. So the electric wrench sets that aside, you don't have to worry about it. And the last electric tool that I tend to make is the electric... Um, sap extractor thing um basically the wooden ones tend to break very easily i don't make anything other than the wooden ones so for me to be able to make one just like all the other electric tools as long as i have power it never breaks so i've got all my electric tools squared away it's time to start thinking about bigger things and in order to do that i need to get to the nether i need to make my first excursion into the nether i need to get some glowstone um dust i guess i won't be getting any blocks i'll just be getting the dust but in order to do that i need obsidian and that brings me to another hopefully handy tip that um makes getting obsidian a lot easier and all you need to do that is either a diamond pickaxe or a diamond tip drill and a number of buckets you need one of those buckets to be filled with water and then you need to have some sort of building brick it doesn't matter it can be dirt it can be cobblestone it can be whatever you have on hand and you need a source of lava so i'll show you it's very very easy basically what you're looking to do is build sort of a trough one end is open there's a little pit in the middle of it that's where the lava goes and then you have a spot just above that little pit where you put the water that you go around you gather up the lava in the empty buckets you put the lava in the lava pit and then you pour the water so that it flows over the lava and if you're quick, you can just click to pour the water into that spot and then click again to scoop it back up. The lava will turn to obsidian. You don't have to go back and get another bucket of water. You just basically took back the one that you used. And if you want to do a number of these at a time, like I've done here, I've got four going. Grab four buckets of lava, fill it up, go down, turn it all into obsidian. Dig up the obsidian with your diamond pick or your diamond drill and repeat until you've got all the obsidian you need. And in this case, this obsidian is being used primarily to fuel or to build the nether portal so that will be our next step is to get our asses into and hopefully out of the nether now the first thing i need to do is set up a spot where i can enter the nether from um, the nether portal when it's active tends to make a certain amount of noise but also i've heard that mobs from the nether can spawn in the overworld near a nether portal so i want to make sure that whatever structure is containing the nether portal is something that's going to be able to contain the mobs from the nether and if they should happen to get out of it, uh, unless it's a ghast that can fly around, it's going to fall to its death. So one way or the other, I generally tend to like to elevate my nether portals. And that's what I've done here is I've created an elevated structure that's enclosed to some extent. And then I need to think about what I'm going to bring into the nether with me. I need a sword to break the glowstone. I need a pickaxe um, because I will be using various different building things to get up high probably where the glowstone is. And I need armor. I definitely want to go in there with some armor. So I'm going to make up some iron armor, which is perfectly adequate for everything that I've encountered in the nether. Um, and everything else, anything that I'm afraid, like if something happens and I get knocked into the middle of a pool of lava where I can't recover my stuff, I don't want to be thinking i wish i hadn't brought that because i didn't need it so i'm going to strip down i'm going to travel light i have a pick and probably a shovel a couple of stacks of dirt the armor and the sword to break the glowstone and that and food and then um, torches and ladders are also handy you never know what you're going to come across but that's you know the bare basics is all i'm aiming to bring
And in this case, I end up with probably one of the better setups into the nether that I've ever encountered. I'm pretty much right next to this ceiling, if you could call it a ceiling. There's no bad guys around me. I don't have to go very far at all to find the glowstone that I need. I just have to build sort of a bridge out to get to where it is, get up to it, break it down, and get the hell out of here. So as long as I don't get jumped by any ghasts, this should be a fairly quick in and a quick out. And in fact, that's exactly what it is. I got more than enough glowstone to get started, so back into the overworld. And now it's time to start thinking about the hive. So we're coming to the end of this episode, and I just want to leave you with a bit of a teaser what the hive looks like up to this point now. The outer structure is basically complete. There's a few tweaks, a couple things that I have to finish off. Um, you can see I've got a quarry running off one side of it. That's just the beginning. I've located the hive in the desert for two reasons. One, it's probably one of the better places to put something that will eventually be driven entirely on solar power. And two, I don't feel so bad about decimating the landscape with quarries um, when I'm working in the desert. Uh, wait till you see what I've got in store for that. The hive will eventually be my central production facility that will be responsible for gathering resources and converting them into useful things that I can then take elsewhere and use to build creative things in interesting places, including the nether. So I hope you like what you've seen so far. The next episode should be coming out fairly soon. I've got all the footage. I'm just trying to get caught up with the footage that I've got, and then we'll settle into more of a real-time kind of a situation. So if you like what you've seen, make sure to let other people know, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.